Okay, pre-calculus students, it is now time to work on horizontal stretches and shrinks. Before we do this, I would like you to graph each of the basic on the graph paper, and please write down the growth charts for each of them. Go ahead and pause this video while you do all four of your basic graphs. Okay, welcome back. Hopefully you have all of your basics graphed, basic parabola, and his basic growth chart. We are now going to study horizontal stretches and shrinks. I'm going to write some notes up here for you because horizontal works a little different than vertical. When you are horizontal, the factor is inside the function. Okay, inside the function. That means it's going to be inside the radical, inside getting squared. For example, negative 2 times the quantity x plus 7 is under the radical. Notice how the 2 here is inside, inside the radical, but, let me put this here in a red pen, it is factored, it is factored out. You cannot have that 2 inside by the x. You have to factor it out so everyone knows to shift 7 units to the left. Okay, let's get started here with our first example. This graph, this parabola here, does have a horizontal um, stretch or shrink. That 2 is getting squared. So we're going to have a horizontal. Remember how horizontal works? Weird. The plus 7 meant go to the left. Well, that big number 2 means it's going to be a shrink. What? Yeah, we're going to shrink. A big fat 2 means you shrink in half. Ah, okay, horizontal has some weird things happening. Which numbers are the horizontal numbers? The overs. So we need to multiply them all by a half. So we have a half, a half one-half, and one-half. And we also have to translate this one three units up. So we'll take our basic parabola and go one, two, three units up. That's where we're going to start. We're going to go over a half, up one. We'll go over a half, up three. And then we'll go over a half, up three which takes me a couple boxes off the graph paper. I'm going to put those dots there so I've got something to aim for so I draw an accurate graph. And there it goes. This parabola has been horizontally shrunk. Horizontally, you shrink them and it gets really skinny. Horizontally shrinking is going to look very similar to vertical stretch. It doesn't work exactly the same with the numbers, but it's going to look like that. I would love to get horizontally shrunk in half. Okay, and the last one here. Got a couple of transformations. I see a negative out in front, so that's going to be reflect over the x-axis. And I see a one-half. Is the one-half getting squared? Is he inside the function? Yes. So that's going to be horizontal. Does a one-half mean stretch or shrink? A little tiny one-half means you're going to stretch. And you don't say stretch by half, you say stretch by two. So let's go ahead and cross all these over numbers off, and all of the ones become two. So while horizontal might be weird, the stretching and shrinking is okay because all the ones are multiplied. Okay, a parabola opening down, we go over 2, down 1, over 2, down 3, over 2, down 5. Here's what the parabola is going to look like when it's reflected over the x-axis and horizontally stretched. Can you imagine grabbing this parabola and stretching them horizontally? You get really wide. Okay? 
Everything else is the same as yesterday. Draw the growth chart and affect the over numbers for horizontal. All right. Hopefully you have your cubic drawn and you have your growth chart writ written down for him. Did you guys study last night? 1, 7, 19? Okay, let's get started. The first equation here has a couple of things. I want you to look very carefully at how the one-third is inside getting cubed. But they did an excellent job of factoring it out. So the x is alone, x minus 5. That's how it needs to be. What if it's not like that? Oh, well then you have to factor it out yourself. All right, this one-third is horizontal. When you see the number inside as a small little fraction, that means stretch by 3. We also have to look at this minus 5, and that means we're going to go 5 units to the right. All right, horizontal stretch by 3. Which ones are the horizontal numbers? all these overs. So let's multiply all those ones by 3. Okay, let's start 5 to the right. 5 to the right. We'll go over 3, up and down, 1. Then we'll go over 3, which is just one box off the graph paper, and up 7. That point's right there. I can graph that. I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, and down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Whoa, this one's so wide. Oh, wide or horizontally stretched, you mean? Horizontally stretched, he gets wide. Okay, this last one right here has two transformations. This two is inside getting cubed. If it's inside the function, that means horizontal. That's a 2, so that's going to be a shrink, a shrink by a half. So let's make all the over numbers a half. Um, oh, we also have to go 4 units down. So we'll start our cubic 1, 2, 3, 4 down here. And we'll go over a half, up and down 1, over a half up seven. Uh, can I fix seven? One, two grip points off the graph paper. Wow, this one is super skinny. Super duper skinny. Don't touch till up there. Oh my goodness. If I horizontally shrink this curve, it's going to get very thin. Very thin. He loses a lot of this curve. Okay, let's move on to absolute value. I hope you drew the basic and you have your growth chart written there. This first example, okay, uh, does anybody notice that this equation is not ready yet? Now you're not going to get the horizontal stretch or shrink part wrong, but if you don't factor the 5 out, you're going to shift it the wrong way. So let's go ahead and say that this is equal to absolute value. You need to factor out the 5 not out of the absolute values, but just out of the quantity. And we'll have x plus 2. So there's two transformations that need to happen here. This 5 means horizontal shrink by a fifth. And he also has to get shifted two units to the left. Okay, horizontal numbers are the overs. So all of the overs become one fifth. One fifth. So let's start two units to the left. Over a fifth, up one. Over a fifth, up one. Over a fifth. I'm really bad at fifths. Maybe what we can do instead, since this is linear, is go the complete box to the right, and I'd have to go up how many? One, two, three, four. I have to go up five. You can go ahead and use this shortcut with absolute value because he's linear. But none of the other functions can have that happen. So we can go over 1 and up 5, and your graph will be more accurate than all those little tiny fractions in between. Let's ask yourself, does this look like he horizontally got shrunk? Well, yes, it does. All right, we've got one more here. Um, this one looks like it might be 
already factored for. Perfect. There's three steps here that need to happen. Step one. This one needs to get horizontally stretched by two. Step two. Three units to the right. Step three. Seven units down. Okay. I'll go right. I'll go down. The horizontally stretching is going to happen here in my growth chart. Multiply the overs by two. All right. Three to the right, and seven units down. We're going to start right here. I don't see any reflections needing to happen, so here we go. Over two, up one. Over two, up one. You must do this until you run out of graph paper. Okay? Not hard. Make sure you show me all the points so I can give you full credit. Nice absolute value graph, straight lines with arrows. Does it look like he horizontally was stretched? Horizontal stretch makes you wide. Okay, the last function we're going to study is the square root function. Okay, I hope you have your square root graph and your growth chart. The first one right here has two transformations. The one half is inside. There's no quantity, so there's no factoring that needs to happen. This one's good to go. One half inside means horizontal stretch by two. That negative out in front means which axis we need to reflect over? Yeah, the x-axis. Okay, horizontal stretch by two. Oh, this is the only function that has numbers in the over side. So this one's going to get a little more exciting because we're going to multiply all these by 2 and get 2, 6, 10, 14. Reflecting this curve over the x-axis puts us in quadrant 4. So we're going to be going down, down to the right. I'm going to be going down 1 over 2. Down 1 over 6. I believe that's all I can fit. So we have a parabola-like thing over here happening, but it's not symmetrical. If I take the square root function and I stretch them, he'd get a little bit skinnier in there. Okay, this last one here definitely has some transformations. So let's take a look at that equation. And I really hope you're thinking, Mrs. Brightheck, it's not ready yet because you would be correct. What are we going to factor out of that? A 3, but are you going to take it out of the radical? No, you're going to leave it inside the radical, and so what you need to use is a set of parentheses, x plus 4. Make sure that radical goes far enough, but it closes before you have plus 2, and there's three transformations that need to happen. Horizontal, is that stretch or shrink? A shrink. You're going to shrink by a third. You're going to shift it four units to the left. Hey, everything inside is weird. Those horizontals shrink with big numbers and less with pluses. But the vertical numbers do exactly what you think. You see plus two, that's going to have you go up. Okay, let's take all your overs, shrink them by a third. So not one, but a third. Not three, but one. 5 divided by 3 is 1 and 2 thirds. 7 divided by 3 is 2 and a third. Oh, you know what I want to do? I want to say 9 because 9 divided by 3 would make a 3. All right, let's go do this. 4 to the left and 2 up. There's no reflections in this graph. So it's going to be arching up, up to the right, like a regular square root. Up one over a third. Up one over one. If you were at a third and you move over a complete one, you're still at a third. Now we go up one and we go over one and two thirds. Two thirds completes the box and then the one puts you right at that corner point, negative one five. Up one, two and a third. Up one 
over 1, 2, 3. So here we go. Here is the square root function. Try to be nice and curvy and hit all those points. And again, with something as complicated as this, it's not a bad idea to check. Why don't we take that one nice point that we found, negative 1, 5, and see if it works. 3 times negative 1 is negative 3 plus 12. The square root of 9 is 3 plus 2, 5. Did it work? Oh, yeah, it worked. Make sure you study growth charts and study the difference between horizontals and verticals. You've got a lot of information here, so stuff might start getting messed up in your brain. So make sure you study each of them, and good luck.